Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my in the bag update video here heading into early summer 2023. We are in the studio right now. I thought it might be fun to give you guys a little bit of a behind the scenes here in my studio. This is my review table right here. Here's my Heiser disc rack. Then I got a layer of Upper Park bags here. Uh, blessed to have a number of these as a member of the team. Of course, before we go any further, Disc Golf Nerd 10, get you 10% off anything you need from Upper Park. My new shirts, they have tons of apparel and different stuff. And then of course, the best bags I've ever used. I mean, just by a wide margin. I've, I've fell in love with these bags immediately. This is my original green shift right here. Still one of my favorite bags ever. I love that one. I'll never get rid of that particular one. I have the brand new one here that matches the Onyx Rebel that I just got in. I don't even know if I carried this one yet. This is my graphite one from last year. And then we got the Pinch Pro that I have been carrying for quite a while, actually, since that came out. I've been carrying it, but just switched back to the Rebel for summer because I want to have plenty of room in here and in these uh, disc sleeves here. But I want to have extra room in this big side pocket here for shirts and stuff because I like to change shirts um, during the summer because I just I sweat a lot out in the course, drink a lot of water, and I sweat a lot while I'm playing, especially during the uh, the heat of summer. So. Really nice to be able to uh, have some extra layers in there and stuff. But yeah, a little behind the scenes look at my studio. I thought you guys might find that interesting. And we're going to take just a, a snapshot look at exactly what is actually in my bag from my last round. Rather than sit in front of the camera and set it all up and yada yada. Let's take an actual look. Whoa. Behind the scenes. Extra behind the scenes. Look out. We're going to take an actual look at what is in my golf bag. Right? So let's dig in. I am putting with... Daggers. I have two of them in the back here. I have this white one that I am mostly throwing and approaching with. Really great disc for approaches and tee shots. I was really surprised by it, actually. Dagger, you know, big deep dish putter, big bead. Two things I never really liked uh, in a putter. But I just cannot deny that this disc continues to work really well for me. I'm connecting on a lot of putts. I like how it fills out my hand. And I'm connecting on a lot of good putts. And then I'm really been surprised with how well this thing flies as a thrower. Backhand and forehand, actually. It's really nice for little forehand approaches. Actually, not even carrying an Opto Pure like I had been for so long. Because I'm throwing the dagger more on those approaches and short tees. And it's working fine, so I just don't need both. Um, this is my main putter, also a dagger. This one, I think, I'm not sure if this one's like zero hard and this one's sense or what the difference actually is, but this one's got that beautiful bursty pattern and I put this one because it's a little, it's not that bad. It's not as bad to find out in the course as you might expect with this green and black, but it's, uh, it's a little tricky. So I like to putt this one. It's a little easier to keep track of it. Moving on from there, I got the VIP harp still. This is the one that Anthony died for me put the spin die on there and then these two bases there so I'm a base player most of my approaches outside of the dagger are, are getting thrown with that thing all my chips forehand and backhand and anytime I need to throw something more stable off of the T short range it's just money love that particular VIP ha uh, harps I just like those those runs and they seem to hold on to stability for a long time like it hasn't really broken in much at all you know of course, I got to have Defiance in here, and I'm carrying two pretty much at all times. This is uh, the one that I threw the most last year and the early part of this year. I was throwing this one that I dyed uh, yellow just to differentiate it a little bit. And this one here, you guys are probably sick about, you know, hearing about these on the channel because I've mentioned them a lot because I'm so stoked on this disc. Board flat, big chunky rim. And just flies like nothing else on the market from, it just, it flips up so easy. But if I keep it on hyzer, I can get it to flip up and still fade out quite strong. So I can actually get this thing to fly over stable at low speeds by using the height and controlling the angle out of the hand. And then if I want to, I can just throw it a little lower and let it flip up and just fly super straight. They also have a tendency to want to land and jump and scoot towards the basket. Like I've had so many shots where this thing lands a little bit early and it just slides up and in, right into the pin or lands and I'm thinking it's going to be a little short and then just takes a little jump, scoot, scoot, and just parked. So I've, I've thrown more birdies with those than any other disc in the bag 
by far. You can find those in the link in the description if you want to order one for yourself. Okay, from there, we have the Arowana. This is one I just put in the bag to start testing. Elevation Disc just sent me super floppy rubber. Well, it's not floppy, but it's very, very soft and gummy, right? So it doesn't like wobble too much in the hand, which is nice because it flies good, but it's definitely soft, crazy grippy and soft enough that when it hits the ground, it really doesn't go anywhere, which is quite nice. I will probably start carrying this pink one instead because that blue one, blue and purple and black, it looks beautiful. It's a little tricky to, f to see and to, uh, to film as well. I'll throw in a clip of me throwing it. You might not be able to see the disc very well. Next, I got a soft magnet in here again for all of my kind of flippy approaches, flippy short range tee shots, downhill shots, all the stuff I always use my magnets for. I'm happy to have this one back in the bag. It's a little hit or miss for me these days. You know, I feel like I've I've grown into more stable approach discs and I'm better with them than I ever was back in the days when I was throwing almost all my approaches with magnets. Um, so yeah, it's a, I'm a little bit out of practice with that kind of like flippy approach game, but it's still working really well on certain certain shots as needed. Give me a close look at that guy. Old four chain softy, beautiful disc. I got a disc golf depot use bin for like four dollars or something, and it's been you know thrown countless times. Next, I got a fuse in here, and this is a light, a little bit lighter weight opto fuse that I died a couple years back. Only 171 on this one, so it's not even close to max weight, and it just glides really nice, and I don't mind that aspect of it. Does seem to go a little bit farther than some of my heavier ones, which is great. And the fuse is like almost a driver for me. It really is. It goes so far. Just a great disc. Anything I want to flip up and hold laser straight, anything moving left to right, of course, the fuse is just ideal for those shots. Next, we have the NSH Custom Discs Nexus, and this is one that I've been throwing on and off as well and messing around with. 163 grams. It's kind of cool. Hulk green with the purple rim. And uh, this one is very, very similar to like my gobies are, but probably less fade. Honestly, not that different from a fuse and not that different from a pure as well, kind of in between a fuse and a pure. So if you were looking to try some 3D printed plastic, the Nexus is probably one of the first ones I would tell you to try out because it's got that more traditional shape and feel and it's a laser straight flyer, really, really nice to throw. Everybody I've had throw that disc as a test. It's just held a, an absolute laser line all the way through start to finish. Okay, oh yeah, before we go any further, if you do wanna try anything from NSH Custom Discs outside of the uh, Signature and Tour Series discs for the other team members and like the Defiant and stuff, you can also use the same code, DiscGolfNerd10, get you 10% off anything you want from them as well. Keeping it simple for you guys, saving you money, giving you some places to shop and also support me. It's win-win and uh, hopefully you guys are into that sort of thing. Uh, moving on from there, the rest of these are drivers and I have no distance drivers in my bag right now. We'll, uh, we'll circle back to that in just a moment. This is a Pro Wraith. Yep, Pro Wraith. I'm bagging a Pro Wraith right now, guys. Kind of weird. 162 grams. It's been a long time since I've thrown any Innova in my bag, but the It kind of broken back into my bag. And then I started thinking about where were some of the other you know, any of the classics that were nice and that I could revisit with through, uh, through fresh eyes now. And uh, Pro Wraith, flying awesome. Really, really nice. Quite uh, controllable, kind of straight stable for me. Flips up a little bit. It'll ride, but it has some fade. You know, pretty true to the flight numbers, I'd say, for the Pro Wraith. It's not quite as stable as that. Maybe a two for fade, but pretty sweet. I've been enjoying that for sure. This is a blast from the past right here. I was just thinking about this disc last night. I appeared on a podcast uh, about my disc dies, and this is one I died on camera many, many years ago. It doesn't look very good now. It looks pretty terrible. You guys might agree. Never was a very cool die job. It was just a simple pin, pinstripe that I did. But this is, if I can avoid showing my ink, it's my first ever Ace disc. I showed you guys this on my... 300th disc review and I aced with this back in December 09. So uh, I started testing this again for review number 300 on the, the end of a Valkyrie and I just put this thing back in the bag after that. I was just flying so nice. I had to start throwing it again and it's flying great. It's flying so well that probably in the next couple days or so I'm going to be at the Disc Golf Depot looking at Valkyries. I want to try some new run star, maybe some champion Something like that. I definitely want to get back into Valkyrie. So 150 class pre-flight number star Valkyrie. 
laser straight flyer, great flip up disc, um, great for turns, rollers and stuff, but just a nice like flip up straight type disc, kind of like my Fuse, but longer. And it's kind of uh, worked its way in onto the Furies territory as well. I got, I think, uh, I think Dick Fury's in here somewhere. Next, we got Baby Billy. This is a G-Star It. Anthony dyed the stencil under here, and he had some bleeding problems. So he actually did another one that you guys might have seen. Uh, this one here. And then he gave me the original one, and uh, I went ahead and did like a glue. So it came out pretty good. Kind of got some, some fire going on, some swirls and stuff, and decided to bag this one. And uh, great disc. It is really nice as well. It's kind of like my Fuse, but longer again. Flips up really straight, flies quite far. And sometimes we'll have a little bit of baby fade to it if I if I give it the height or the angle, but I can also get it to hold right really, really nice and smooth. Great roller disc as well. Really fun, fun disc to throw that I'm enjoying. Also, got the NSH Custom Discs Guns, and this one I've been calling Bubble Guns. It's really soft and gummy, as you might be able to tell on this other camera over here. It's got a lot of a lot of give under the thumb and uh, super, super grippy. That little bit of texture as well. Very, very grippy on this thing. And the guns is kind of a more traditional shaped driver type disc from NSH Custom Discs, but I kind of find it to be more like a fast mid-range for me. You know, somewhere maybe six speed or so for, for my arm, six or seven. Stable flyer for me that I can throw out. Kind of like the harp, but longer range. Kind of uh, similar to, I was carrying the Emac for a while for that front of slot. That's one I'm experimenting with that just feels really nice and I'm digging it. Okay, moving on from there. Got the old Workhorse Escape in the bag. This is just a really basic stock Lucid Escape. Nothing special about it whatsoever. Stamp's been gone for a long time. It's got all these scratches on top. Maybe 170. Throwing a ton of shots with this thing. It's just an absolute workhorse. Flies very straight. Can hold angles really well. It's a really, really workable disc that I throw a lot of shots with. I don't have much footage on that disc for whatever reason. That's a disc I'm throwing a lot during my golf rounds. Like... Again, as a as a real tool, it's not like one I'm throwing fun shots with and filming. I don't know. For some reason, I just don't have a lot of footage on that disc, but I do throw it. Next, we got the Ricky Felon. It's one I call Sprite Felon. It's got like a little lemon lime dye going on with this particular one. Um, probably one of my favorite overstable utility discs I've had in the bag, really ever. I've thrown a lot of excellent shots with this thing. It's not so overstable, so for me, with lower arm speed, I can get pretty workable flights out of this thing but it still covers me on a lot of those same type of things you know spike shots and forehand flexes and stuff it can still it's still plenty overstable but not as much as like a firebird or something like that that's a real mean meat hook type disc then we got grogu back in the bag this is my opto culverin and put him back in because i've been throwing slower speed stuff i want something overstable that flies a lot more than the than the felon does this one's a lot more of a flyer but it's still pretty torque resistant doesn't turn over on me accidentally and it has some fade but yeah more basically like a more stable escape more or less easiest way so that's exactly what i carried out there at rooster rock the other day i got a couple of minis i got this red dead space mini that nsh made for me very cool and other than that i got these few discs down here um this is a nsh custom discs nx01 their for kind of first foray or one of their first forays into the distance driver realm take a look at that guy this particular one's quite stable he kind of tweaked the stability the half-life on here awesome disc this one's beefy though I haven't only thrown it a couple times i gotta continue testing that one there's that arowana and the other color i was telling you about that i'll probably switch to the nsh custom disc bird of prey this one's a glow color glow as well i'm going to try that on my next round Here's the other NX01 that I have. This one's a sick roller disc. Nice flip up disc as well. And I uh, dig in this one for sure. That's why I wanted the little bit overstable one. So this one would probably be in my bag again relatively soon. I got also Mr. Putt. Mean overstable short range disc that I really like to have, but I don't often need it and a harp. I can kind of get done with one or the other, so I kind of switch it back and forth. It is more mean than the harp, though, I would say. The harp flies more. Um, of course, got a Gobi. Now, of course, the Gobi, is, it's strange. You know, I've had these in the bag for so long. You know, arguably my favorite, one of my favorite discs of all time. Well, inarguably one of, you know, arguably my absolute favorite disc of all time. I'm throwing so many good shots with this thing. 
but I just don't need it with the Defiant. The Defiant is just taking over a lot of its territory. And then with between the Fuse and the Defiant and then the Nexus, I could check up on the It. I, I just don't need the Gobi. It's, it's strange to not have it. This is an Opto Caltrop that I started kind of testing again. This one I aced with during the last round I ever played with a good friend who has since passed away. Um, so I kind of have uh, sentimental feelings towards this one. I was kind of thinking about putting it back in the bag for that. It's beefier than I remembered, actually, and um, it might be something that I experiment with more. Um, I'll probably definitely start carrying it on shorter courses to try to uh, ring up another ace for Mike on that one eventually. And then I got some Havocs that I haven't been throwing, but the ones that are my most current are this one here with the kind of Simon die on it. Opto X, quite overstable for a Havoc, but nice flyer. Here's Dick Fury. I just haven't really needed this disc because I've been throwing the Valkyrie and the It. And last but not least, final disc in this video, if you even see these, I might just cut it off at the bag, um, is the Opto Air Havoc. Pretty sweet. This is a really nice flyer too. Just a great, great distance driver, but the distance drivers in general have been angering me of late. Which is why I only had these nine speeds in the bag for my last round. So that is it for my in the bag video. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate all of your support very much. Once again, use my code to support either of my main sponsors, Upper Park Disc Golf or NSH Custom Discs. Disc Golf Nerd 10, 10% off anything you need. I really appreciate their support very much. And I appreciate all of you guys for watching. Shout out to the Disc Golf Nerd Patreon support team as well. And the likes and the comments and all that type of stuff. I appreciate you all very much. And I will talk to you very, very soon. Cheers.